morning of the 17th of June 2023. We're just going to look at the world of debt, uh, the BRICS uh, alliance. Macron wanted to go to the BRICS meeting in South Africa and the strange things that are happening in the world. So I've, I've uh, hung this up here so you can just see it, the notice, and it's just, just a sort of a chat. Like, on the face of it, there is a huge move by uh, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South Africa. And they're called BRICS Plus, new members of that, including Egypt, Mexico has applied to join, and other countries. And... Um, on the other hand, that's what you'll get if you go into YouTube. That's what's coming down the road and the US dollar is in big trouble. But I just want to balance that up a bit. For a start, there's a huge dispute between India and China, a boundary dispute, not going well. Secondly, India is in the process of buying uh, weapons of war from the United States. Most of their weapons of war used to come from Russia. Russia's not able nearly to produce them, but anyway, there's a deal going down now between India and the United States to buy drones. Big, big, huge airplanes. A man could fly in them. These are drones that can spy and do everything and even drop bombs. And there's a war with China. So that, while China and India are apparently getting together on de-dollarizing de the, their, their, their export and in, in, import, import trade, that has to be borne in mind that that friction is there. The other thing is that um, Iran is trying to move in with Saudi Arabia and get involved there. On, can't wait to dethrone the dollar. But Iran and, uh, and Saudi Arabia have not been the best of friends up to quite recently. And China is trying to uh, broker a deal. Iran has a lot of really high grade crude oil, really good oil so that's a little bit of tension there as well the other thing is that South Africa is not going well it's not going well uh, I don't know what's wrong with them they don't seem to be able to run that wonderful country too good it's not all a bed of roses there e e economic wise now as regarding debt the United States has so much debt that it can never be paid back and they've raised the debt ceiling, they've got an agreement to put back the debt ceiling, the debt limit to 2025, till after the next presidential election, so they can spend away like there's no tomorrow and they're trying to raise bonds. In other words, they're trying to raise a trillion euros from anyone that lent it to them and they're putting the, the interest rate up. I think they're offering something like 4.8% at the minute for even maybe two-year paper, two-year treasury bills. And that's going to suck money out of the other economies because if somebody has money in the bank and only getting 1% interest on it, <clears throat> they might take it out and put it into to, to treasury bonds where they get 4.8%. Okay. Now, inflation in America is running about 5.2% at the moment and similarly in the EU. And Austin Hughes, the Irish... Uh, economic advisor I did a course that he was teaching us and I think he's very good he's, he's very simple way of going on but he is very good Austin Hughes and he says inflation is here to stay I think we're looking at at least three years of inflation in all of these countries running at about six percent if not higher you can see the prices going up everywhere you go when you go to buy something like an electric drill or something it's going up and we have we don't have hyperinflation but we have high inflation all over the world Okay, so Putin, there's an arrest out warrant out for him, rightly or wrongly, and South Africa is a signatory to the, the agreement for the arrest warrant, but they're going to, they've given him diplomatic immunity. They've said he's a diplomat, so he's effectively becoming an ambassador. And he's going to uh, now a BRICS summit that's taking place very soon. I think it's early next, no, it's this month, it's the end of June, in South Africa. And uh, they're, they're not going to arrest him. So there's a bit of disappointment there by the United States who want Putin that he can't go anywhere. And now he's flying to South Africa and he's going to be looked after and he's going to be safely brought back. Unless they can divert the plane and force the plane to land somewhere. And that would be an international incident. I, I am not too sure about that. I presume he might have Russian fighter jets escorting him. But anyway, he's getting to go there. 
And you know, the strangest thing has happened, and that's why I said strange things. President Macron of France has said, I want to go as well. But this is France fraternizing with the group that's trying to dethrone the dollar. And he's already bought gas in the, in the Chinese currency, the yuan. And he's already made soundings that he doesn't agree with the United States calling all the shots. And uh, Putin has said he wants, he wants to check if he's not a Trojan horse. If he's not just going there to see what he can do and what he can do and bring the whole world back and the message back to the United States. So they need to be very careful. I'd probably let him go, but I wouldn't let him into the meetings. I, I don't really know he should be let go at all. I mean, he's not the, the classic. Um, France is a nuclear power. It's a member of NATO. And it has been dealing in dollars for a long time. But, but it'll be one they'll have to call. It'll be very interesting to see what actually does happen. Will they let him go to it? Uh, Macron can't be elected again. I understand he's served two terms. He cannot go up for election again. And of course, Marie Le Pen, the right-wing uh, leader, uh, is, uh, is, is looking at getting that job the next time around. So I'm just saying a strange things. Now, the Chinese economy is not in strong shape. And though it's, it's bailing out countries and putting in this Belt and Road Initiative and building airports and building all that, it's not getting some of its money back. And they're going to have a big problem having a currency to do for imports and exports and, and replacing the dollar. Because, because in some countries, there's such bad government that in, in the, the, the value of the money do, decreases with inflation at a very high rate. So they come along and they buy this new currency and uh, they keep, keep the currency for six months. And then they expect to get the same thing back for their currency, which is deflated. At the moment, those countries have to buy the dollar could be millions of their own currency they have to then buy what they want uh, with it and that doesn't suit them but the same problem could arise with a new BRICS currency so that would be interesting to see how that is operated however my own view is that the real clincher in the currency debate and the, and the dollar hege hegemony and, and you know what that means uh, mass, uh, being the reserve currency is when the United States seized the assets of depositors, when they took the Russian money that was lent to them to pay back bonds and to run the US government, and they seized it, and they'll spend it for a while, they'll have a good time spending it, but there's no way anyone is going to reinvest in any type of a credit institution which will not give you your money back. They know also that the next thing is other countries are going to be sanctioned. I think it's 13 countries in the world are already suffering US sanctions. So that's not going to stop. And the next thing, as you know, it'll be LBGPTQ sanctions and it'll be climate change and carbon tax sanctions. And Uganda imposed strict laws on uh, homosexuality and Biden is trying to force them to repeal it. And he's going to try and hit them with sanctions. And so that will be the crack. So it's, it's the same as when COVID broke out. Before COVID broke out, I would have to go into Kingscourt or Carrick or um, Bally Bay or Bally Jim's Duff or Karen or Ross Mart, which I'd usually go to. And uh, I would have to buy bid on cattle there like everybody else. And you'd have dealers in claiming cattle and I'm buying this one and you're buying that one. There was a bit of that going on. And when you're selling, it's the same thing. Every, and nobody could buy without being there. The only way you could buy animals if you weren't there was get someone to buy them for you. That's gone. Now with the COVID, they have market eye and you can bid online and you can sell online and they get the best price for you and you can decide if you want to take it or not within an hour. And you get a text on your phone. So there is evidence of a very conservative uh, industry, farming, which has managed to escape through the internet and build, bring in new ways of doing things. And I was selling uh, an animal there one day and I could see, uh, you go in beside the, the auctioneer, and I could see the bids coming in online and the people in the, in the, in the, down in the, in the mart bidding. They were bidding and you'd see the thing going on online. And farms have been sold, up to a million euros worth of farms have been sold recently using online betting, online, sorry, and online bidding, online bidding. So what I'm saying is, if you give the reason to do something, it will, it will happen. As long as the dollar 
was dotted along. There was no big hassle about it. It was as handy as any. Why bother? The Chinese could change their currency up and down. And they do manipulate the currency. But in my humble opinion, I'm open to correction on this, they don't manipulate it all that much. In other words, if the, if the Chinese allowed the yuan, the, the Chinese currencies are in NIMBY and the yuan is the unit of it, if they allow it to be the dominant currency, they couldn't devalue it. They couldn't start rooting with it themselves because, for example, if Zimbabwe buys a million of it, of the Chinese currency, they just can't have that for devalued within a month at the whim of the president of China. So China will not want that. China's not going to do that because if the currency, the Chinese currency went to increase in value, it would hit Chinese exports that couldn't sell their products, which would be getting dearer. Do you understand that? So, 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 so the point about it is um, the new BRICS currency would, would have to be some way separate. At the moment, the replacement for the dollar is the yuan. But that's all right in small amounts. And indeed, it's all right for certain transactions. And it's working all right. But eventually, there'd have to be a separate hard currency, probably based on a mixture of gold, probably oil, gas, and other things that would be pledged to support it. It can be done if there's a will there's a way. And they've given them the reason to have the will. So therefore, I think there'll be some success It'll be very interesting to see what happens at the summit. It'll be very interesting to see, will they invite Macron? They never thought in the wildest dreams Macron had want to go. And they're afraid he's a Trojan horse. I don't know. It's possible Macron might come up with a way. I'd say he might just want to be in on the action and say, well, we can play with that too. But having, having France uh, jo uh, even negotiating to join the BRICS currency and the BRICS countries would be a big blow to America, a big blow. They've already had Mexico looking at it. A huge blow. I mean, none of the, all of this won't come to pass, but I think a good deal of it will come to pass. I think I think it will. I think the day of being able to use your currency as a weapon of war and a weapon of social control and a weapon to impose certain, uh, um, certain uh, laws on other countries and all of that stuff is drawing to an end. I think they won't do it because... 80% of the world is not in the West at all. 80% is not is not a member of the West. There's no, uh, yeah, so 20% would be in Europe and the United States and Canada. And that's it. And maybe Australia. That's it. Uh, that's, that's, that's still 80%. And to think that the United States and, and Europe can, can control all of that forevermore, I think it's a little bit, a little bit over the top. I don't think that's going to happen. A serious problem for America if the dollar loses its its even half of its of its uh, present position. Anyway, folks, that's basically just an update on the local news and the news and all that, and uh, it's more or less a bit of chat that I'm giving here and and all of that. So we'll see you back for something else and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thanks.